daytime. You can call me Buster, and I'm back on Tiny Wars today for a pretty big news video. Now, this is not breaking news. This has been around for a little while now, a few weeks, but I decided I wanted to let you guys know about it anyway. Also, I'm on my phone today. Did you guys know that Tiny Wars works wonders on your phone? Well, it works wonderfully anyway. It's not going to do anything to your phone that's particularly wonderful. It's not going to do anything bad either. Anyway, this is Tiny Wars running on my Android phone. And uh, I want to show you the newly rebalanced COs. That's right. We recently added some rebalanced versions of the Days of Ruin COs. Now, we're not going to go over any of these custom COs down here today. They are not part of this video. Instead, I just want to talk about the original Days of Ruin COs. So, Days of Ruin is known for being one of the more balanced games in the series, but that does not mean that it's perfect by any stretch. So, we went ahead as a community and did some rebalancing. So, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, you'll notice... We have two versions of Brenner, for example. One is Brenner Minus and Isabella Minus, and we also have some plus versions of other COs, and there are a few who have been left untouched. So let's go through them in the order that they appear here, starting with Brenner. So going to Brenner Minus, you'll notice that one of these things changes, the CO Zone Expansion. So with regular Brenner, he has three zone, and then every time you gain 30 energy, his zone expands once, and then once your power is ready, it goes up to five. Well, now it only goes up once to four, and that alone is a pretty big nerf. However, there is one other change. You will notice here, regular Brenner gives all his units 10 offense and 30 defense, but now Brenner minus only gives direct units. 10 and 30. So that means that his indirects are not going to be affected. Um, however, things like his battle copters are still going to be affected. So that's pretty nice. So this is just a small nerf. And then of course, direct units are the only thing he buffs during his power as well. So Brenner, you may be surprised to hear he's actually like tier one. He's a very strong CO. Uh, so he did need a little bit of a nerf. Now, many people know that Isabella, however, is one of the most broken COs in the game, mostly because of this insane superpower, giving all units plus two movement, including your air units, your infantry, so they can run and capture stuff. And then, of course, the indirect units. You can turn your artillery into rockets. You can turn your rockets into uh, uh, battleships? I don't know. Things that just shoot across the entire map. Just the whole map. Just, you know, all of it. On top of having four scythes uh, CO zone with the 2020. So she needed a pretty big nerf. Big time. So here is Isabella Minus. Has the same stats. However, her day to day, she only gives 10% defense instead of 20. And on her CO power, the 10% defense is carried over, as well as nerfing the indirect attack range from plus 2 down to plus 1. So that is a pretty big nerf right there. She still gets the good movement on her infantry. The infantry movement is kind of the big one. Of course, it's very useful on tanks as well, battlecopters. I just like to fixate on the infantry movement. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny to me. So that is Isabella Minus. She's been nerfed. Lynn, Will, Forsyth, no changes whatsoever. These three have been unchanged, as well as uh, Calder and Tabitha. I will just mention that now. Um, technically, Calder here is a nerfed version of Calder. If you have ever played the original Days of Ruin on the Nintendo DS, you know that Calder is completely cracked. So this is a nerfed version of Calder. Technically, this could be called Calder Minus, but uh, he's been in the game since the very beginning. Tiny Wars, that is. Anyway, just needed to mention that. Next up is Gage. Um, he is an indirect specialist. Now, normally he gives indirect and naval units 
20 offense and 10 defense on top of the regular 10-10 that all COs give in the CO zone. And then his superpower simply gave his indirect unit plus two max attack range. Now let's move over to the new and improved Gage Plus. He has the same portrait, wouldn't you imagine? Now, when you uh, look at this, there's like an extra bullet point here. It looks a little bit confusing, but um, when you actually play as Gage, it's not super hard to keep track of. It's just some different categories of units that he buffs in different ways. So first of all, that's the usual 1010. The second bullet point here, now he boot now he boosts all ground units and naval units <clears throat> in the CO zone by 10% defense. So now he no longer boosts only indirect units, now he can also boost tanks, for example. So when you combine it with all his units getting 10-10, now his tanks will get 10% offense and 20% defense. Tanks are like the bread and butter of your army. It's also nice that it boosts his infantry as well as literally every other thing that you can build out of the base. It's super nice to get that little bit of defense. And then this third one is just indirect and naval units getting plus 20 offense, which is what he already got before. We've just extended that 10% defense to ground units. And then one of the more spicy things on the bottom here the CO unit gains 20% extra offense. So that's another thing that is strengthening Gage's tanks. Most COs, even Gage being an indirect specialist, you kind of want to load him into a tank just because you get that veteran boost 20% and then his CO tank will be even stronger as well as this ground unit boost giving him an extra 10% defense. So altogether you get 40% offense and 30% defense on his CO tank if you choose to load him into that. So it's very, very interesting. Basically, the big thing to keep in mind here is that he boosts ground units and his CO unit is going to be stronger. I guess it doesn't need to be a plural CO units. It's not like you can have more than one, but uh, that's just how it is. Anyway, his superpower is the same. He gives his indirect units plus two max attack range and on top of making his day-to-day -day global. So that is Gage Plus. A lot to go over there, but he's pretty interesting to play now. He he has a very dynamic playstyle. He can boost a lot of different units. Of course, uh, naval units are not really all that common to begin with, but I've been on Gage for too long. Let's move on to Tasha. So, Tasha is an air unit specialist. She does a lot of extra damage with her air units, 50% offense in total and 30% defense. Um, air units, a little bit niche, especially when there's a lot of anti-air around or on maps where air is not super viable. Heck, there are maps that don't even have airports. They're not super common, but they, they do exist. Um, another thing that kind of sucks about Tabitha, sorry, Tasha, is that she only has a CO zone radius of one. Let's look at Tasha Plus. Now, she still has a zone radius of one, but if we look at her day today, it still has the same buffs, but oh, look at this. Air units in the CO zone get plus two movement day to day. Oh yes, all air units. So if you have Tasha sitting right here, and then you have another Battlecopter sitting right next to her inside of the CO zone. That thing is going to zoom across the map. And her CO Copter, assuming you put her in a copter, you probably should, um, that thing will also zoom around and be able to dart in and out of the range of anti-air without being caught. So that's pretty nice. Now she was one of the earliest COs that we buffed, and I feel like she's still not all that great. But let's take a look at her CO power. It is the same. You may remember that regular Tasha gives plus two movement to air units. Well, Tasha Plus still does that on top of her new day today. So she gives plus four movement to all of her air units on her superpower, which uh, it's just overkill. It's so, so much movement. 
it's, I mean, it's super great. You can dart across the map and look at your opponent's base and be like, I'm going to shoot that tank that just spawned there. Anyway, Tasha, she, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, and I'm not the be all end all here, but I think Tasha could still use a little bit of a buff. Maybe something similar to where Gage was able to boost his CO unit and his ground units, you know, to make him more uh, versatile. Whereas Tasha still only boosts her air units, and um, having stronger tanks is often touted as one of the biggest things that makes a CO viable, like, day to day. Speaking of COs that do not need any extra glow up, here is Greyfield. Greyfield is very widely regarded as possibly the weakest CO in the game. Uh, he sucks. Even though he has a CO zone radius of 3, he only boosts naval units, seaplanes, and battlecopters, and it's mostly a defense boost. Now, if you've ever played a defensive CO with battlecopters, you'll know that anti-air still really cripple them, even with this much defense. Now, it will survive, don't get me wrong, it's not going to one-shot his battlecopters, but uh, you'll notice I'm only talking about the battlecopters. Uh, naval units obviously don't see a lot of play, and seaplanes by extension, because you can only build them with carriers, which is the most expensive naval unit in the game. In fact, the most expensive unit in the game, hands down. Uh, it's not super viable. Now, there are some maps out there here in Days of Ruin um, that have pre-deployed carriers, specifically so that you can make some use of seaplanes, and Greyfield is a little bit better on those maps. But uh, the good thing about having 3 zone is that you can build up your charge a lot to get to your superpower, but Greyfield, uh, his superpower is kind of useless. It just makes his zone uh, global, but it also recovers all of your fuel, ammo, and material. Oh boy, it's just like the Jess power without any of the exciting stuff that Jess's power does. Oh boy, you can refuel your submarine that's been dived for five turns and about to sink. Um, um, what else? Um, um, you can restore material to your carrier that's already built four seaplanes. Uh, you have enough money to do that? Uh, anyway, yeah, Greyfield, he sucks. Let's take a look at Greyfield Plus, though. Right away, you'll notice his boarding cost is now 30%, down from 50%. And on his day today, oh, nothing's different. But didn't I say he doesn't need a glow up? Oh, no, he doesn't. Let's take a look at his superpower, shall we? It's the same, except now temporary airports and seaports can be used to deploy unweighted units, including seaplanes on the temporary airport. You heard me correctly. He can deploy unweighted units on his airports and seaports. The temporary ones. Not just the regular ones. The ones that you can build with a rig anywhere you want. Well, not anywhere you want, but on planes and on beaches. So if there is a map like, oh, say, let me go into my map editor right here. I want to look at uh, this one. This is a map that I'm working on right now. You see these... Uh, temporary airports that are in the middle right here and also this temporary seaport Greyfield during his power can just build stuff there and if he caps this temporary seaport right here he could choose to build like a battleship or a carrier just in the middle of the map Greyfield Plus could that's the wrong button I want to click on this and this and this yeah Greyfield Plus he's uh he's a little bit cracked now, he's not super powerful still, because this is very map-dependent, and if there aren't a lot of temporary buildings already available, then he will need to spend some extra time and money building a rig, and then sending that to build a temporary building in a place that would actually be useful. So, not necessarily the be-all, end-all of air and sea COs, but he is still very good, especially on maps that lend towards his strengths. So yeah, 
he's a very funny one. He's one of the funniest COs in terms of uh, the plus or minus, the nerfs and the buffs. He got a pretty funny buff. I like Greyfield Plus. I want to play as him more. But next up we have Waylon. It's time for Waylon to start Waylon because he got a buff. It's a very tiny one. Once again, just like Greyfield, his boarding cost is now 30% and his day to day and superpower are unchanged. Indeed, the only thing that he got was a 20% discount on his CO unit. Now, the thinking behind this is that Waylon is actually not super bad. He's kind of like tier 3, but he's like the very top of tier 3, maybe the bottom of tier 2. And the reason for that is just because his battle copters, I mean, his playstyle is air units, right? And air units are expensive. Battle copters cost 9,000, whereas a tank only costs 7,000. And loading your CO into a battle copter is obviously going to cost more than it would to load into a tank. But Waylon doesn't want to load into a tank because look at this, he gets a lot of defense. He wants to be in a battle copter. And plus that 30% firepower is very nice. And uh, when he gets a superpower, nobody can touch his air units for a turn. I mean, they sort of can, but they also sort of can't. So basically, the thinking here is that he won't have to pay a whole lot of extra money just to load his CO. So he won't have to, like, he doesn't have to stop himself from loading his CO a turn later than his opponent might just because he doesn't have the money if that makes sense like your opponent could load a co into a tank but Waylon might build a battle copter but then not have the money to load himself into that battle copter without having to base skip as a result of that so basically it's a financial decision he will never financially recover from this but uh Waylon plus he will financially recover from this all right last but not least, my favorite. If you've been around my channel for any amount of time, you know that Penny is my favorite. I like Penny. Penny is funny. We go into the standard ranking queue and then we turn the weather to rain because luck is a skill and we can totally do that. And uh, we ruin things by making standard maps suddenly fog of war. And uh, guess what? My favorite Penny got a buff. Oh boy. Penny Plus. So, regular Penny. Her day-to-day -day is just a big old nothing soup. She is not very good at all until you get your superpower. I will admit that. However, she has three zones, so it's not so hard to get that superpower. But day-to-day, -day, she only has the regular 1010 and then all of her units are unaffected by weather. Well, there's not going to be any weather in ranked until you get your superpower. And uh, that's obviously what you want to work towards. But Penny was seen as just a bit too weak. She was not really able to get her power as effectively as other COs. Like, for example, Will has a lot of extra offense, which allows him to get more CO charge because the amount of charge you get is based on uh, the damage you deal. Well, Penny's not so able to do that, even though she has a pretty big zone. So what did we give her? an extra 5% attack and defense. Yay! It's a tiny little thing, but it's a pretty big deal. This, apparently, I was uh, asking Plague about this a while ago when, it, when um, these buffs happened, and according to Plague, this 15% changes a lot of thresholds, so like you can one-shot some other things that you couldn't before, and you can also survive shots from some things which is super nice. And then of course her power is unchanged. She's still the weather uh, casino bot that we all know and love, but now she's just a little bit stronger. Expect me to continue trying to ruin standard with buffed Penny. She is now tier zero and I will not hear anything otherwise. Okay, she's only tier zero once you hit the superpower and only if you don't hit snow because snow sucks. But rain is the best one, and anyone who says sandstorm is better um, is wrong because you can't shoot what you can't see. So 30% offense reduction in sandstorm? Ha! Ah, 
Uh, to that I say, you can't shoot what you can't see, and therefore rain is a minus 100% firepower reduction. All right, I've said my piece. That's it for today. Um, that's all of the COs that have gotten a plus or minus version. Let me know what you guys think of this change. Oh, by the way, this is very important to note. The rebalanced versions of these COs are going to be available in ranked. The originals will not be available. However, you'll notice that uh, both versions are still here. Um, you're able to use the original COs in multiplayer mode, free mode, single player, anything else that's not a uh, competitive ranked mode. These are only for ranked. And of course, you can use the buffed or nerfed versions in your uh, casual games as well. But uh, I just wanted to let you know, if you play ranked, you are going to be playing as the buffed and nerfed versions of these COs. So that's very important to note. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of these changes. Do you approve? Do you not approve? I can't think of the word right now. That Anyway, do you approve or not? Do you think it's good? Do you think they need even more changes? Do you just want to go back to playing Advanced Wars by web? Because that's what everybody is doing. And nobody is giving Tiny Wars a chance, except that they are. They totally are, and you should too. Come on over. You can play on your phone. It works a lot better than Advanced Wars by Web does on your phone. I can say that from experience. I'm rambling. Thank you all ever so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe before you go. But until next time, goodbye everyone. It's nighttime.